planning for day two. Day two was a little bit more up in the air. One being because we didn't know if you wanted to go follow uh, high, or Interstate 80 or follow Interstate 90. 80 is the shorter route, kind of the more direct route, but you know, 90 is probably, I guess, safer, especially um, if you have any sort of wind or clouds or anything like that. So like we said, the day one was a little more cloudy than we expected. It wasn't an unpleasant day at all. Definitely didn't want to do lots of high terrain flying with that many clouds. Friday night, um, it was actually looking pretty good and Caleb made the decision. We wanted to do the um, follow um, inter Interstate 80. So just a lot of checking and making sure that the skies were gonna be clear. We kind of had a plan in place. Uh, we didn't make any formal plans, no hotel reservations or car rentals. We decided that we wanted to try to make it to Provo Airport in Utah, which is, I don't know, would you call it a suburb, a suburb of Salt Lake City? Mm -hmm. So, um, kind of southeast of Salt Lake City. Day two was looking like it was going to be the shortest of the days of flying with, I think we ended up flying about three and a half hours, and I think, I think we said about three. It would have been nice as we were looking and planning if we could have gone a little bit farther. Unfortunately, the airports west of Salt Lake City were pretty small and remote. Um, making it kind of hard to rent fly. a car and spend the night. <laughs> yeah, in the middle of nowhere. The Salt Lake City area kind of was our only option. I think we left the hotel at 6.30. Yeah. We were taking off at 7. I think we took her off right at 7 a.m. It was really nice. Um, the Rapid City Airport, they had hangar space, and so they were able, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they hangered the plane for us. They hangered the plane for us, so we didn't have to put the cover on it, and so it made jumping in the plane and leaving pretty convenient on Saturday morning. You know, so we left early, jumped in the plane, took off. Slightly cloudy in Rapid City. Yeah, but nothing, nothing like the day before. Rapid City Tower, Terminal Five, Charlie Tango, ready for departure runway two, turning to the stop. Five Charlie Tango, Rapid Tower, Runway 3, 2, Cliff Tango. Five Charlie Tango, on course. started heading southwest so at this point we were north of where we really needed to be because we really ended up flying a bit north not knowing whether we were taking 80 or 90 um, and so by the time we committed to 80 we had gone quite a bit north and basically now needed to come back south yeah. and so headed southwest so we, we started flying southwest um, basically to catch up with Interstate 80 because we were already well north of 80 at that point so yeah. flew southwest to catch up with 80 and caught it you know somewhere in Colorado I don't know exactly where but but had a chart or had a route plan based on uh, some data I found online about other people who had recommended some routes uh, particularly following I-80 to Provo or to Salt Lake City uh, you know kind of from the flatland and uh, that seemed to work really well I mean we, we were in mountainous terrain but nothing ultimately that high and basically staying close to the interstate we never had any terrain issues uh, one of the cool things about the Garmin which we've ne I've never really spent any time with before is it has an entire terrain mapping system and it can show you based on your route of flight like what the terrain looks like you know when you fly where it's 600 feet and flat everywhere you never you never need that <laughs> um, but in this area like your route will show you uh, on that like you know how close you are to any kind of terrain issues uh, along the route of flight and so and at the altitude you're flying at and so uh, we had no issues I mean I think I think we started off 
8500 mm -hmm. um, and I think then shortly after we climbed to 10.5 we I mean we we're four or five thousand above any yeah 10.5 10 were great for us well, I was a little conservative on the route like there were definitely places where I was following the road and I could have like stayed on a more direct path over a pass or I'm sorry over a ridge to, to instead of kind of going around through more of a pass uh, I had plenty of clearance but I just didn't have the experience and you know you just never know when you go over those ridges like what the wind is going to do and I, I just wanted to be uh, cautious the first time going through that but um, you know our, our path wasn't extremely direct although I, we weren't doing a lot of jaggeding stuff on this day um, but I did I did try and stay pretty close to the road or at least within gliding distance of the interstate just in case we did have an engine out or something like that at least we had some place to, to land um, and or get assistance uh, but it was a pretty easy flight overall I would yeah, say. Yeah day two was super easy um, the one really cool thing about the flight I mean you definitely started to hit see some mountains in the distance is um, the approach into Provo that was pretty cool. November 9 or 5, 5, Charlie Tango, contact Salt Lake Approach on, well, I forget the frequency, it's 128.6. Uh, 128.6, 5, Charlie Tango, thanks. So we went through Park City and then through the Provo Pass to get into Provo. And so that was really pretty because it's this huge mountains, it's this narrow gap, you fly through it and then you're in a and, and flat then, area. And then, yeah, <laughs> the basic, basically you lose 4,000 feet of altitude right there. Yep. And, and so, you know, you're, you're flying along and you've got, you know, 4,000 feet and the ground is there and then, you know, you go through this pass and all of a sudden, you know, it's, you know, eight or 9,000 feet to the ground and it was a, a, a little... I don't know, it was, it was really cool, but it was also like, wait a second, what just happened here? It was fun. The big issue when we got there is that the we always run through Hertz, and so the Hertz doesn't open until I think it was one, and we got in at eleven, and so we didn't have a car. So we took an Uber, took an Uber to the hotel since our car wasn't ready, and that was fun because the Uber there was like ten dollars, eleven dollars, and here in the Bay Area, like that same Uber would have been $45 <laughs> for I mean, as far as we went. Th the cool thing so. is our Uber driver was uh, super nice. And yeah, it gave us lots of tips. Out, pointed out some really cool things to do. Ultimately, we decided to like drive up to Great Salt Lake. I was expecting the kids to get in the water and like check it out. The beach that we went to had a horrible smell, which I guess is kind of like a known issue. And so, and they had like a crazy number of flies and the kids, Hate flies like bugs and so we were there for I don't know three minutes and left but I guess we got to see Great Salt Lake so and we went into Salt Lake City proper and we saw the Mormon temple downtown and you yeah. know, some of the gardens and stuff surrounding it just kind of interesting to see since we'd never been there before also one thing that I didn't realize is it was blazingly hot in Utah trying to get anybody to do anything out, including me outside uh, you know, at two o'clock in the afternoon when it's 100 degrees out is hard. So I finished the day out and uh, woke up the next morning for the final day. <laughs>